Okay, well, welcome to the computer and network security class. Uh, today we're going to talk about just an overview of network security, go over some terminology, and uh, just give you a general introduction to uh, some of the words and terms that we use in network security. So to start off, I wanted to pro provide a definition of network security. Uh, a real generic uh, definition is that network security is used to protect data during transmission. Whenever we're dealing with computer networks, the idea behind having more than one computer network together is so that they are able to share data. Whatever kind of data this may be, this could be a, a client computer communicating with a web server, it could be uh, FTP, file transmission from one computer to another, it could be chatting, it could be sending email. Any kind of communication between one computer to another has to occur over a network. There are uh, physical networks uh, in addition to computer networks. Um, one of the easiest ways to transmit data from one computer to another, and you all probably do this uh, very frequently, would be to save it on a USB drive or on some kind of an external drive and then physically carry it to another computer and plug it in. This does form some kind of a network, but it's not going to be the type of computer network uh, that is always available or mostly available that we will be talking about uh, for most of the semester in this class. Whenever you refer to network security, it's always important to also consider physical security. And a lot of times, uh, network administrators will uh, not consider that. Most uh, computer networks, uh, especially server rooms, are going to be secured behind uh, locked doors. Uh, there may be additional security with multiple keys, uh, maybe some biometric readers to be able to get in. They all also will be uh, on elevated floors. This would help if there's any flooding, that uh, the servers would not have any threat, uh, or at least it would take a while before the water would get high enough for them to threaten some of the servers. And then the racks that the servers are on are also filled top to bottom, which uh, helps with this as well. Um, so we need to make sure that we are securing it not only against digital attacks, but we also need to make sure that our networks are secured against physical attacks uh, as well. Internet security, another term uh, used to protect data during transmission over interconnected networks. Uh, hopefully you all have learned uh, the difference between a network and an internetwork. We have one large internetwork that we refer to as the internet, uh, and all this is is just a huge network uh, of computers that are connected from uh, all different areas of the world. We have a lot of smaller networks, local area networks, uh, metropolitan area networks, personal area networks, uh, where we have devices connected, computers connected, uh, in a much smaller environment rather than uh, the internet, which is our wide area network, or one of our wide area networks uh, encompassing the entire world. Some security concepts here, uh, just an overview of them. Uh, a security attack is any action that compromises the security of information owned by an organization. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the data is stolen, it just is a compromise. I'm sure that you all have received emails from whether it be uh, a university or your bank, a credit card company, uh, a nonprofit, somewhere where you have an account where you have to log in with a username and a password and you get an email occasionally that says uh, some of these accounts may have been compromised, we're not sure if they were or not, but it seems that there was a breach of security and then they ask you to change your username or your password uh, because of that. It usually isn't something which is too drastic um, that you would really need to change some, a lot of personal information. Occasionally uh, a banking website may uh, be attacked or be compromised and so the bank may ask you to uh, change your uh, password. Uh, sometimes they'll also reissue credit cards. I know that uh, I have had credit cards reissued from banks if they think that my credit card number may have been a compromise in some kind of an attack. Um, and then they just deactivate the uh, existing account uh, information so that you're not able to get into it until you uh, change it. Now, one problem that comes up with this is if the attackers are intelligent enough to realize what's about to happen and then uh, they already have your existing account information and they go in and change it after the bank or whatever website says, hey, you need to change it right now. So it's important when you get notices like that that you respond to them as quickly as possible. 
uh, so that there's no risk of a second attack, uh, possibly by the same person or maybe by different people uh, on your account at that point. Uh, security mechanism is designed to detect, prevent, or recover from a security attack. And then the last bullet point on this slide, a security service enhances the security of the data processing systems and the information transfers of an organization. Um, a lot of security, a lot of network administration plays into protocols and not just communication protocols like you learned in the OSI model or the TCP IP model, but they play into protocols and documentation making sure that when something happens that it's very, very well documented to make sure that it's not going to happen again or that the risk is mitigated so that it's very less likely to happen again. So uh, it's a constantly learning game. Good network administrators are uh, difficult to come by and they typically stay at organizations for a long time. They should be very well compensated because they have, uh, they have the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. They are in control of that network and they have the ability to take it down or keep it up. And um, sometimes it's not their decision whether the network is going to stay up, but they uh, really are good people that companies need to have these good people on their side to make sure that they keep their networks as secure as possible and hopefully keep them up. <coughs> the difference between a threat and attack, a threat is a potential for a violation of security. It exists when there's a circumstance, capability, action, or event that could breach security and cause harm. <coughs> uh, this is just that there's, there's something that might cause a problem and we need to fix it. You all are very, very familiar with this. Every operating system on the market has uh, potential threats and then they release uh, bug fixes, security fixes, uh, hot patches, whatever the operating system happens to call it, uh, where you need to update your operating system so that it hopefully is going to counteract a potential threat that they have identified. Hopefully the threat hasn't already escalated to an attack, although that's often how uh, these threats are exposed, and an attack is an assault on a system security that derives from an intelligent threat. So once Microsoft detects that there is a threat, again, it's very important, or whatever operating system you're using, it's very important that you um, uh, fix that, that you download the patch as soon as possible, because as soon as, as soon as one of these companies releases and says, oh, there's a security risk, you need to download this patch, what they just did was alerted the world to an to a hole, to a threat. And then you have a lot of people, a lot of malicious programmers anywhere around the world that say, oh, I could actually attack this threat because not everyone is gonna download this patch right away. So it's important that you download it and fix it because that's going to then uh, make your computer harder to attack than other computers that maybe sit on it and don't update their operating system for a week or two after one of these organizations has released that uh, the the threat exists. Now, <coughs> last semester we talked about the OSI model, which is the Open Systems Interconnection model. There's seven layers to the OSI model. Uh, the first layer is the physical layer, second is the data link layer, third the network layer, fourth transport layer, the fifth the session layer, the sixth is the presentation layer, and the seventh is the application layer. Looking at these seven layers, what layer of the OSI model are we most concerned with when it comes to network security? <coughs> now, as you're thinking about this, you have to think of what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to prevent attacks uh, occurring on our computer or on our network devices. <coughs> the answer to this question is that we're really concerned with all of the different layers of the OSI model. Even down to the physical layer, we need to make sure that nobody is able to wiretap what we have coming in and out of our physical layer. Uh, if there is a potential of wiretapping, such as going through the internet, where multiple routers that we do not own are going to be able to see our data, then we need to start going up the hierarchy and including things like encryption. And we'll talk a lot about encryption in our next couple of lectures. We'll talk about the differences between asymmetric encryption and symmetric encryption and how we can make sure that even if somebody is able to read the messages that we're transmitting, that they're not going to be able to get the data that's in it unless they've somehow compromised our keys that we've used to encrypt uh, the data. All the way up from layer one at the physical layer to layer seven at the application layer, we need to be concerned with security. 
one of the biggest problems with the OSI model. It's a very good theoretical model. However, security was not thought about when the OSI model came into existence. So all of the security measures that we have are actually put onto individual layers after the model was completely designed. So we do have security built into, let's say, the application layer, layer seven. We have HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol at layer seven. If we want it to be secure, we have secure HTTP, which is HTTPS. It's just a protocol which is uh, running in layer seven. The layer itself does not implement security. However, we have specific protocols that do. And we have this at different layer, uh, different protocols through all of the different layers uh, in the OSI model. We've talked about the relationship between OSI model and TCP IP, which is the model implemented in the internet. It's the exact same analogy though. We do have security built into some of the protocols that are running in TCP IP. However, it was not built into the protocol stack. So it's after the fact built on the protocols. This isn't necessarily a bad design decision though, because there are a lot of applications that don't need the additional security built in. And if we had built security in where it happened on every layer every time, you would have more overhead on the applications that didn't require it. So it might be a blessing in disguise that it wasn't thought about at first, but we do have protocols that operate at each layer now uh, that utilize uh, security. So that gives us a nice introduction, some of the terminology that we're going to be using. Uh, so we'll uh, move on now to our next lecture.